My name is Izo, um, and I'm here to talk to you today about uh, how we built rock solid agentic orchestration with Go. Um, I work at a, well, I work, I work on this product called um, Aura, and it's a development toolkit to help developers build resilient AI workflows. And we obviously use Go, but I'm just going to go through the story of how we built some of the core features of that product. And I'll explain to you like, some of the cons and some of the adventures that we had while we're doing it. Um, so, agents. Um, so, who here has built any form of agentic workflow? Show of hands, anyone? Okay. Wow, this is a lot more than I thought, actually. <laughs> um, and in production at all? Like, no? No production? Okay. So, um, so the, the, the cool thing about agents is like the promise of agents is that they can take these tasks, break them down, you know, big, t big goals, break them down to simpler steps, figure out how to get them to, to work, especially if you're dealing with things like unstructured data and you don't want to like write custom solutions every single time you see a new bit of data. So agents are really good at breaking those tasks down and just replanning if they need to. Um, so aside from, I mean, obviously you have problems with prompt engineering and you've got issues with, um, you know, maybe evaluations and stuff. But aside, aside, if, you figure, if you manage to figure those things out, the next thing that you have to figure out is how to make them work in concert. And that opens up a whole can of worms. Um, you've got issues like, you know, database connections failing. You've got APIs that don't work. They're actually really slow. How do you deal with latency? Costs start ballooning. Um, so it becomes more of a distributed system type of problem rather than just the agentic problem. So now you have two problems. You have two undeterministic, so non-deterministic issues that you have to deal with. Um, so Aura, we, so we weren't working on Aura. We were working on a different product. And then we, really, we had this insight that actually what, what you really need is something to babysit these agents. And we came up with this concept of a plan engine. And this plan engine gives us like a durable execution against everything that happens. But because agents are non-deterministic, you have to kind of like hand hold them. Like, you know, you need to babysit them along the way to kind of make sure that whatever they do, they can fix things. Or if they change their mind, you can undo what they did, essentially. Um, and to make this work, uh, we had a, a few tries. A lot of them didn't work, but then one day we were like, there's this really simple thing, could it possibly work? And that, possible, that simple thing turned out to be a really big win for us. And it's essentially, it's so basic, I mean, you know, and it's the append only log, um, which is, you know, a write ahead log or a commit log or a transaction log, but not, not an application log. So it's not the, not the log that you know where you write stuff and, you know, want to go and view what happened to your application. It's, so this log, I'm sure a lot of you are aware of this log, um, um, essentially is, is got se sequential, essentially. So you start from zero and you keep adding appending to the end of it. Um, it's got uh, entries are ordered by time. So like you, you get time steps to tell you which log entries are first, which was in, which ones go in the end. Um, and you can actually put anything in all those slots. So it's up to you what you want to slot in. Uh, so it's very flexible. Then it's not a new idea. Again, I said this is it's almost as old as time. So it's used everywhere. It's used in key value stores. It's used in databases. Um, used in Git. If you've been using Git today, you've been using logs all day. Um, so it's something that's been around for a long time. It's, it's really good for atomic operations when you need to make sure that you, you know, if you want to change your mind, if you want to roll back, you know, you know things are going to work. And it's also very good for durable operations. So you, to make sure whatever happens, you can handle failures. Um, it's, 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 it's quite powerful. But it's, again, very simple. Um, so to create a log, you just, you, know, you just need an array when you just chuck in a bunch of log entries into it. I mean, that's technically all you need for a log. Um, and like, the more you work with logs, it's the, you, understand, you start understanding that they're all about what happened and when it happened. And that's very useful in agentic workflows. So as long as your data is immutable, it doesn't change. It's like you put stuff in and you know it's solid. Like it's, and you know, um, the more you put in, the more you start realizing that you're de like, this, is, this can become your source of truth, which is quite a big problem for us because we're, we're trying to figure out like, 
what the agents were doing, um, which was very, very hard sometimes. Um, so this is, so I mean, log replication and like databases do this all the time. You, you're kind of writing to a log. You're doing a lot of inserts, doing a lot of deletes. And you can take that information that you've added to the log and like set it up into a different database and just replicate it there and you get the same information back, which is, you know, it's, it's really powerful. And in databases, like, I mean, you, you have two concepts of logs. You can have a logical uh, log or you can have a physical log. And one of the cool things about that is that with a physical log, you just, whatever was inserted, whatever data you have, every single row can just get added to the log and just goes ad, ad infinitum. Or you can use this concept of a logical um, log, which essentially the SQL statements themselves get added as entries. So then you can replay it, which is essentially migrations. Um, so that's cool to be a log. Um, so we're, we're going to take this log on a journey to kind of make it sh work for the agents right now. So ignoring databases, um, one of the cool things about logs as well is in a distributed system, you can have multiple uh, workers looking at your data. And it's, remember, it's immutable. So you know, as long as there, some, some of them are reading, they could be running anywhere. Some of them are writing. Um, and they're listening to specific entries, I guess, to kind of to get a job done. Um, so that's, that's, it becomes like a state machine. So you, whatever you add in, someone else can listen to it and kind of make, like, use it to do whatever they do. And, it's kind of really easy to kind of implement still. It's like you're just appending stuff and you're just reading from an offset. It's not, not, not that complicated at all. Um, so this gives us a simple way to recover because if that worker, worker C, failed, to recover all you're doing essentially is you just, you just have to go back and read whatever happened before and you just, that gives you an easy rollback. Um, so these are all the building blocks that kind of helped us with our agent workflows. So I'm going to swap into that now. So imagine if your log is rather than handling everything that could happen in a system, it's for like one specific job. So we took the log and we said for every job that we need to get done using a bunch of agents, we're just going to use one log. And that log is going to have a plan. So we, we generate, it's a plan engine. It generates execution plans. Um, so the execution plans basically will maneuver some of these workers, give them instructions on what they need to do. And we seed, seed the log with like a first entry. Like um, each worker is proxying an agent. Um, so the way our toolkit works is that you can talk to any agent written in any language or any framework. So we don't really run them on our system. They run somewhere else. So we essentially proxy, workers are proxying other things. And then when you get writes, we write them back to the log. So it's quite, you know, gets your head. Um, to do that, we have this thin layer called a job orchestrator. So it helps us essentially, when we get a job, uh, we figure out what is required to do it using some service discovery. And we look at the tasks that are generated using the execution plan. And then we try and understand using a dependency graph. So we use a DAG to understand which ones depend on, on what and, um, and which ones we can run in parallel. And that gives us more throughput to the system. And again, we're proxying other services. So we, we kind of use this orchestrator to kind of manage what happens when, essentially. Um, and it assigns dependencies to all the workers. So the workers know what kind of things they're looking for and when they can start working on them, I guess. So I've got a demo to show what this means in production. Uh, sorry. So I'm using actually Cloudflare workers. Uh, so we're using durable objects and running the agent SDK. I've got a video. Let's see if it works. Uh, let's, let's just double check that works. So yeah, I'll, I'll try and sort of sorry, put that there. 
been to a demo to showcase the power, the amazing power of the. Can you guys hear this tool or? In this case, Aura is going to be orchestrating a bunch of agents and uh, a couple of um, services. We have a product advisory agent and it advises people on what products they can buy. We have an inventory tool as a service and that essentially finds that information about specific products in the inventory and we can purchase things using the purchasing tool and we also have a delivery agent that tells us when items are going to be delivered and schedules them. Right, in this case, all of these agents are running on Cloudflare you can see this here, so they're all running on Cloudflare, and we know that they're registered with Aura. We, so for dif different actions or jobs that need to be done, Aura is going to discover these services and figure out which ones are required to be orchestrated to complete a specific job. So in the first instance, we want to recommend um, a product, and the query that we have is that we're looking for a specific laptop uh, under a specific price. So when we run this um, against Aura, Aura creates an execution plan, and then that execution plan gets translated into the power, like gets executed, and, and a panel log is generated to kind of track what every um, action that's required to complete this execution plan and what the interim events are that kind of make it happen. So if I inspect this, you can see the audit log based on that panel log. And you'll see here that we only needed one specific service and to complete it successfully. These are all events tracked at the append only log. And you'll see that um, it ran OK, it processed. Here are the inputs and outputs. Again, these are all items tracked in the append only log. And it completed successfully with the final result. Let's say we want to buy um, this product. So we're going to purchase. We want to purchase this product. We know what the ID is. But in our case, in this one, the um, the payment gateway is down, so things are going to fail, and we will need to kind of revert um, to a good uh, or compensate essentially and ensure that uh, in this case inventory items are being reversed. So if I run this again, uh, Aura generates an execution plan. The execution plan um, will generate an append a specific append only log, and then all the transactions and all the tasks are being run through that specific append only log. Um, and as you'll see here, that everything's being tracked. So the infantry service is, you know, it's completed. It's the delivery agent is processing. The infantry service is completed. So we have, we're running it multiple times in this case. And the purchase service, the purchasing service hasn't run yet. So if I like inspect again, you'll see that oh, the purchasing service is failing. Like I said, because we're simulating a failure, and. You can see that all the items are still uh, being tracked using the append only log, and it's really clear uh, because every single event is ordered. And based on this order, you can actually figure out what's happening to all our um, specific components. In this case, the delivery agent was processing, then it failed, then it started processing again, and it completed. So it's you know it's it's kind of resilient, and we know we understand what happened exactly. And then if I can run this again, you should see the compensations kick again. So if you go back here, you'll see that we had compensations for the inventory service. It got compensated twice in this case. And then the compensations ran correctly straight away. They didn't fail. And again, the append only log allows us to kind of roll back and revert to kind of understand what items and what data needs to be passed into the services so that they can undo what they've done before. And that's the, that's the true power of the append only log. Right, that was just me talking to myself. <laughs> right, I'm just gonna do that again. Yeah. Where? Sorry. There we go. Um, so it's that that simple um, that simple construct just gave us a lot of power. Before that, we were using a lot of pop sub, and it just wasn't working. And then we started using channels, and things just it, it just wasn't. We were getting lost in a lot of detail and just fighting deadlock essentially most of the time. Was when we introduced this thing, it was just so much simpler. So, uh, the, I'm just going to go through the last thing. So, how do we get the results out? Um, you kind of saw all this actually working. Um, so, the the results are again, it's really simple to get the results out. We just are listening to a specific uh, log entry type. In this case, just a task output. We know what dependencies for a specific operation are required. So, we just when we, when, when we get them, we read them out, we push out the results, we finalize everything. Um, so that's really nice and easy. Um, where we have incidents, so we can also abort stuff in, uh, in the platform. So you can say, oh, 
logically this should never work, just abort, or obviously there's a failure. You, again, really easy, you just listen to the log entry type and based on what happened, you just finalize things and it just rolls back. Um, there's a lot more stuff that we do that I try not to <laughs> get into, but yeah. So they, they have cons, uh, obviously, two simple cons that are quite annoying, but you can work through them. So one of the things bef before we go, like, with because we're self we're self hosted, we try our best not to use big vendor like um, machinery. So we don't use Kafka, we don't use um, any of the big sort of products because we wanted people to be able to run these on their own environment without having to worry about installing or paying for for Kafka or you know whatever else. Um, and we had to figure out our own infrastructure internally and keep it light. Um, so some of the things that we have to deal with um, is like, what, we had to kind of ahead of time figure out what to do when the logs get really big. Because obviously the more data you add, the less performant your system is. Um, and we can start doing compaction strategies, which you can do in your own system if you want to work with this. But for us, it was, that kind of didn't want to work, didn't work because the fact that we wanted oper human operators to kind of deal with what the agents did if something went really wrong, and we wanted to keep that data for a long time. So for example, if the payment gateway failed, um, you, you don't know if the failure happened, like it's not instant, it can, you, you might get a request back, a call back two days later, and you need to deal with it. And we didn't want to remove any data because we wanted to make sure that whatever happens, um, you, you know, you, you still have all the information you need to do your job, essentially. So our way around it is small jobs, lots of them, small logs, but um, yeah, this is something to worry about if you're, if you're not doing that. The other thing is, obviously, as the log grows, you're, you're reading from the beginning to the end. Obviously, that this is gonna get really slow. So um, there are a lot of implementations out there on how to deal with this. Databases have a lot of things to talk, to say about this. Obviously, there's partitioning, you can do snapshots, um, you can have indices, you know, that's another way around it. So there's, there's a lot of strategies to kind of figure your way around these, these, these cons. Um, but I, I still think it's quite powerful. Um, I mean, we, we had to layer a lot of infrastructure on top to make it work, and everything runs in parallel, so it's, it's good. Um, that's it. Cool. Yes. <laughs>